Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video I wanted to introduce a new upcoming course that I'm really excited about and I'm so happy to finally be able to bring this to you. This course is going to be on 3D game development. This is going to combine a couple of my passions, namely 3D programming and a couple other things in between such as AI and, and whatnot. We're going to combine those into making games and so now this is a free course to everybody so um, Now this is a free course to everybody. I've spent a lot of time putting this together, so I really hope you find it useful. And for those of you that are subscribed to this channel that may not be interested in this, uh, this is just an eight week course and we'll be having more mobile and server side tutorials in the future. But this also does pertain to mobile as we'll be exporting the 3D game assets as we'll be exporting the game out to Android and iOS. And then also we may continue this in, in future videos to, to stand up a server for things like multiplayer and that sort of thing. So let's get started with just the introduction to see what we're going to be teaching in this course. Now, most courses will just teach you one thing or another. Uh, so for 3D game engines, they'll kind of skip up the whole part about how 3D assets are created. And, and so you're either left to find those on your own or sometimes they provide them in a package and then you just drag them into your engine and you start using them. But how do those actually get created? How does the animation on those work, etc.? And so we'll cover all of that. And so you'll learn the 3D concepts and the animation part of that. We'll also be creating our levels in the 3D application blender. And so what we'll be doing is creating assets that are modular and that can be duplicated over and over again. So if you see this graphic here, the second one from the left, we can snap these pieces together like Legos. And we'll show you how to do that, but that's essentially one way of creating a level in our game engine. Most tutorials that I've seen are very, very light in the coding. A lot of the tutorial creators are not programmers. They're either um, graphic artists or people that want to get into game development. And they just don't have the background in coding. And so uh, having my 20 years of C++ experience, I'm actually really excited to be able to use C++ in a modern game engine because a lot of different game engines will like to try to either abstract it or dumb it down or just simplify it into you know something like JavaScript, which is a half decent language, but it doesn't give you the full deep down language like C++. Now people have mixed feelings on C++ uh, and that's fine, but I think most of those issues just come from what other people have heard and they've never actually used the language themselves. Uh, but having said that, we also have this thing called blueprints, which kind of abstracts the coding itself. And sometimes it's actually a little bit faster than coding. And so in this course, we'll actually be using a combination of both, kind of a hybrid model. And then some areas where we just need something to happen really quick, we might just use blueprints because it's really easy to create, easy to modify, and you can just create it. And then for more complex interactions, it's really, really nice to have the full power of C++ behind you. Uh, then finally, we're going to construct all these games in the Unreal Engine. Now, if you want to follow along with this course, this course is going to be eight weeks, as I said, from June 26th to August 10th. I am teaching this at the local university from 5 p.m. to 6.50 p.m. Monday through Thursday. So I'm putting in a lot of work for this, and I hope you guys will find this useful. And again, it's free for anybody that else wants to subscribe to these videos. I will be live streaming some of these classes. Uh, I will not be live streaming all four classes per week, as some of those classes will be workshops and other things that don't doesn't really make sense to live stream. But if you guys are interested in it, then please follow along. The live streams will be archived, so you can always watch them later in case you miss them. And for those of you that are not interested, again, my apologies, but it's an eight-week course, so we should be over with it soon. All right, so I'm going to introduce myself here as your instructor for this course. Uh, my name is Mike, or you can call me Professor Z. Uh, I've made over $100,000 in games. Uh, this is not to brag, this is just to show that I do have experience in developing games for profit uh, that have done really well. And so I think you'll find other tutorials online. Uh, they might be just amateurs, or if you're really lucky, they are people who are in, uh, professionally doing games. And that's great, and they usually charge for their content because they deserve it but in our course, we're gonna keep it for free. So sometimes you get what you pay for, but hopefully you'll get more out of what you pay for this class. And I hope, again, you find it useful. In the past, I was a technical director for a company whose clients included Hasbro, Verizon Wireless, T-Mobile, Canon, 
etc. And we did a whole bunch of 3D for these guys. And I gained a passion and understanding from some really extremely talented CG artists that I, I worked with. And they put together some really powerful uh, 3D, both animations, still images, etc. And it just, it fueled a passion in me. And I just, I wanted to understand all of that stuff. And so I did learn it, but I also saw that the power that 3D had, including augmented reality. Now, this is back uh, maybe about over 10 years ago at this point, but, you know, AR was a big deal back then. And then it kind of petered out where the technology just wasn't there. Instead of having the camera on a phone that you could directly see on the screen, we were using webcams, uh, the kind that sat on top of your monitor. And so we would grab these things and we'd point it at the desk at a QR code or something like that and have some, uh, some kind of animation, uh, augmented reality come out of that little QR code. And so nowadays with this stuff built into your phone, it's just a lot more powerful. But I've been working on this stuff since then and off and on again, not, not full time. But I'm telling you all this because if you're going to invest your time and energy in learning 3D game development, which is pretty complicated, and you're gonna learn that from me, you should really know your background and why I am qualified to teach this. So let's get into a little bit about how I got my start in 3D. So my former employer was creating things like this and the, this was an animation at the beginning of a flash demo. Uh, for a game called Sorry Spin, and it was a pretty cool game, and it, the 3D w allowed us to show how the game was played. Really powerful stuff. So this was my first model that I actually had put together based on a whole hodgepodge of different YouTube videos that I, I, I found, and you know, this is a little while ago, and so these days you can find whole tutorial series on this, uh, including one on this channel that I've I put together just for a couple of my friends, just so they can get into Blender and feel that they knew what they were doing. So after kind of learning the basics of 3D, I took this image that I copied directly off of another artist who I, I just found was really, really awesome, and so I copied it. And that allowed me to not have to focus on what I was going to do or what I was going to create or where that object was going to go. I just just copied it and that again allowed me to focus on the 3D and not the creative side which personally I lack a little bit being being more of an engineer and programmer. But now I mean anything that I create is I, I try to strive for realism and I'm, I'm pretty happy. I think I can create almost anything that I can put my mind to time permitting. So let's get to the actual games that we've produced. Uh, here are a couple of 2D games that we had pitched in the past to a particular client. And uh, the, you might recognize the, the general idea of these games, but these are the actual assets that we produced um, that we actually went to the client and said, you know, these, these could be potentially games that we've developed for you. And so let's take the latest game that we've produced and you can kind of see a couple of the screenshots. We have a snowboarder, kayak, bicyclist, and there's a bunch of different animations in here, including the snowboarder and jumps and the paddling of the kayaker, including all the animals that come in. We have some environmental effects with snow. If you pick up some pickups like power-ups, the uh, player will sparkle and other things like that. And so we do want to cover this in the course that we're going to be putting together in the next eight weeks. Okay, so let's take this game and do what's called a post-mortem on it. Uh, I'll take you basically from the beginning to the end really, really quickly and give you an idea of what we'll be covering in this course. All right, so when we went to the client for this initial 3D game, we literally kind of started with this concept. We took a couple screenshots off the internet, slapped them together in Photoshop, kind of gave us the idea of what game we wanted. Now, if you didn't already observe from the screenshots prior, this is a infinite runner game where things are coming at you and you're moving left and right with the uh, mobile device uh, by swiping left and right. So this was kind of the initial idea of what we could possibly do. And we said, well, we could have a snowmobile or a bicycle going on this mountain here that we're, we're trying to model. So after that, uh, once we got kind of the initial go ahead on that, we developed uh, some concept art. And this is obviously real concept art. You can take a look at this and this is the splash screen. We have the intro, the level select, and the actual in-game. And obviously this is a very, rough sketch of kind of the idea, but it allows us to communicate what the game is, one, going to be, two, 
the theme of it kind of a, a more nature with a lot of trees and mountains and, and that sort of thing and then also some of the elements that will be present in this and so if you remember from the previous screenshots that i have up there there is deer running across the the pathway and so as our vehicle in this case for the uh, the gameplay we have an atv on there we later decided not to go with any motorized vehicles because we didn't want to have the concept of you know having these polluting vehicles up on this pristine mountain that you get your water from so we did away with that had some other areas in there but in there we have roots that kind of stick out and, and rocks that you can run into and and coins and obviously the concept has changed a little bit be, but that's the whole idea is you start to get into these ideas and then your mind changes or you find a better solution. We did a lot of research on the, the mountain itself and the area and different things like that. We wanted to have very realistic and accurate environments in there. And so we actually did research on the trees that are up on that mountain and what kind of trees those are so that when we put those trees into the 3D environment, that those trees matched. And so anybody that's familiar with that area, be it a park ranger or somebody who's a, or anybody that just happens to be there, they can look at this environment and go, yeah, actually that looks really, really familiar or wow, they, they nailed that. And it's all these subtle details that, that we find pride in, in creating these games. And so this is just one screenshot of the, of the trail guide that we had for uh, Mount Shasta. All right, so getting a little bit beyond the uh, the initial concepts and trying to figure out what the interface would look like, we simply just grabbed a few assets online. This is a screenshot from latestscreens.com uh, that we just found via Google search, uh, but we kind of put this into a, a mix. We used the background as kind of our path of what that might look like. And this screenshot on the right was really good because this was almost exactly what we were thinking for the bicyclist. Uh, levels that we were going to put into the game and so what we did is we combined those into something that kind of looked like a mobile game to see one would it even fit on the screen like you kind of would imagine it would uh two what does it look like what kind of what kind of stats are you going to have is there a timer that counts up is it counts down are you supposed to collect a number of bottles so in this one we have uh, we've collected two of 15 bottles, but what are those other things that we collect, namely the the water droplets and that sort of thing? So we, as we were thinking about this game and putting together these concepts, it, it really kind of asked a whole bunch of questions of us of what we wanted to put into those games. And then we debated amongst ourselves what, what would make the most sense. So once we kind of had the gameplay down and the idea around that, we obviously needed some kind of way to get into the gameplay in the first place. And so why are you up on that mountain? What are you doing? What's the whole idea behind that? And so we did come up with a, a little bit of a story behind that. But the initial screen that you see when you load up the game is a play and a menu. It's basic stuff like boilerplate. But uh, we ended up changing that a little bit, but we wanted to showcase the mountain itself. And so these are obviously concept images, but we use Google Maps to kind of see what that would look like and put that into 3D. And then when you're going up the mountain based on the storyline, you start off as a runner and then a bicyclist and, and that sort of thing. You get up to the top of the mountain, then you got to work your way down. And so it kind of gives you a story just in the mapping of that. And then if you select, let's say, runner, or kayak or something like that it would give you the screen on the far right where it's choose your level and so you'd have these sub levels of of a snowboarder and that sort of thing now don't look too much into it it's just a kind of through a couple of lines on the screen so we did a little bit of concepting within unity itself and we threw together a realistic 3d model that we get all the terrain data from and put that into Unity to kind of play around with how we would do the mountain in our game. We quickly realized though, and this was pretty obvious to us in the first place, but you know, we try it anyway. But putting all these points in for modeling a mountain was a lot for the mobile device to handle. Now, this is a couple years ago, so uh, these days it might be okay, though battery life is always a concern because if you're going to have these really complex models, for the game to actually render these out on the screen is going to take a lot of battery power for our, our users. So not a very good idea. This is another asset that we kind of put in the, the game for testing purposes. And you can see that all those lines represent uh, vertices and edges that just really are overcomplicated. You can take a look at how many lines are on that wheel and 
in a mobile game, the bike is going to be really, really small, and so you're not going to see any of these details. So we ended up replacing this asset really quickly. But again, it was just a test piece that we threw in for testing and, and what the, the game engine could handle. And this is the final product. And so you can see kind of how the menu evolved from those rough sketches to something a little bit more professionally designed. And then the actual gameplay where you can see the bicyclist there and the bike. You don't see a whole lot of the bike. You, you barely see the front handlebars there, not much past the body, the back wheel, the seat, and that's about it. But uh, every once in a while, you might see a glimpse of it as the, as the biker turns. Uh, some wolves are running across the screen. And then finally, we have a, a menu that kind of matches the branding and the color scheme that we had in the beginning of the menu there. So just to remind you what that used to look like, and what it looks like now. And so one way where you go from concept to final product, and sometimes they match up perfectly, like kind of like the mapping that we have on the left, and then other times it goes totally different. So we obviously made this game in Unity, which we have a lot of experience in. Uh, here are some just in-game, in-editor screenshots that we took throughout the game process. You can kind of see how this is laid out. Some more editing, how the terrain is laid out with the geometry and everything like that. And this our menu system is actually in the middle there um, for our heads up display. Just gives you a little bit of a behind the scenes view of how these games are made. And again, we have a lot of experience in Unity. In this course, we're actually going to be using Unreal Engine and we'll compare the two and I'll ultimately let you know why we decided to go with Unreal Engine. So the fact that we did this game in 3D allowed us to reuse those 3D assets, namely the snowboarder in this case, and pose and animate it and then do a freeze frame on that and get the animation into a really cool pose and then use that as our icon for the game. Of course, we can also do some in-game screenshots to show you different perspectives. Now, our player never sees these views, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's pretty typical in the industry to show parts of the game that the uh, that the player will never see. But you can see here that this is the front of the bike. It is a little boxy. And you can see that the player here is a little bit boxy and his arms are kind of sharp and, and flat in some areas. But again, this is for mobile. And so we wanted to keep the, the detail down so that it doesn't kill battery or make the phone really hot. But here are some other screenshots that we used for different marketing purposes, advertising on the Facebook page, etc. And so because this is all 3D, you can move that camera wherever you want. Normally, the camera just sits behind the player the whole time in this particular game. But we moved it around to try to get some cool action shots. There's a kayaker coming down the river, or maybe a little bit of a close-up on him, and a little bit of an action shot here. You can see the kayak in a little bit more detail. We have some logos on there. This is one of my favorites, just kind of you know following him from a over the shoulder view thing so here's just a, a good shot of the bike and the bike actually looks pretty detailed however a lot of that is not in geometry but it's just images so for the brake discs for example and the tire treads those details are not up in geometry they're again just flat images that kind of look like an add geometry and the engine handles this a lot better than say if we had a whole bunch of vertices to define that geometry and those ups and downs on those tread you can slap this on a facebook page for a promotion to advertise your game or that the release is pending i guess players who are interested in maybe biking games and say hey you know i might actually be interested in this game all right, so that was a basically an overview of the game that we created and all the different aspects and things that went into it. But what will we be learning in this class exactly? So we'll be using Blender for our level creation and assets. And you can see that this is a modular level that we've laid out. And just really quickly, we'll get in more detail in the course, but it gives you an idea of we create these little pieces like Lego pieces, and then we stick them all together in our engine. We'll also be showing you how to create assets for these games whether you want to create a cannon or a player or even just a box for the player to jump on or explore or open up we'll cover the texturing of those assets and so for this example in the cannon there is a kind of iron texture for the cannon itself as well as a wood texture for the stand and the wheels and that sort of thing and in the lower right hand corner you can kind of see these texture maps that you may have 
seen before in other 3D programs that you may or may not have used. And then our normal map, which is kind of that purple box, which doesn't show a whole lot of detail, but we'll show you how to do all those things in this course. Whereas normal courses, again, that I've been frustrated in, in trying to learn this stuff in the past has always been, they kind of assume that you have all these assets created or, or you know how to get them and we'll teach you all this fun stuff. So we're going to then show you how to make these assets look good for game engines. Now this is not for printing out on a, a a large screen but for game engine so we'll, we'll have a compromise between low detail and making things look good and then once you have those assets looking good we'll show you how to export those for size orientation format uh, to bring them into our game engine and so in this example I'm just pulling up a reference shot of a soldier standing next to that cannon and how big that cannon should be in in meters and so you do a little bit of measurements there you kind of resize your asset and then you're ready to export it so here's the final version of what i'm ready to export with our little uh, reference guy standing up there in the right and blue and then finally getting it into unreal engine this is a uh, very uh, starting prototype this is within the first couple minutes of putting these assets these walls that i showed you from previous screenshot putting those into blender kind of making a short little maze and then adding textures. Those textures are horrible, by the way, but it was mostly to give me a reference for adding the textures in Blender and where I needed to add these textures, what orientation they needed to be, uh, and that sort of thing. So just to test it out and kind of see how those were gonna go in and then modify the assets and then re-import those so that they look a lot better. So here's the example of me going back and fixing some of the assets and textures, and so it looks a lot better doing a little bit of lighting and a little bit of environmental effects and uh, so much more. Again, this is kind of the beginning of this process. Uh, we also go into code and C++ to show how to do some programming for our character and some other aspects within the game and basically go from start to finish on the coding. And in this example, we have a player walk up to a box. The box automatically opens when the player gets near enough. And then there is something in the box that you can then pick up by hitting a button. And that will add some kind of power or some kind of inventory item to your player. So we'll show you how to do that as well. And then finally, at the end of this course, we'll obviously have a game that we can play. Uh, so we have some fire effects here with some particles that I'll show you. That's an older version of the canon that I do have in there. I, I did read do the cannon but i do like that one because it's more of a uh, a ship's cannon all right guys that's the introduction to this course again this is going to be a free eight week course that we'll be putting on four days a week uh, for about two hours like this video if you want to see more leave a comment below if you have a question or just want to let me know your thoughts on this tutorial and for those who are looking for more mobile development or maybe back-end server stuff, uh, again, I will be continuing those series. But that's exactly what this channel is. It's kind of a, a mixture of everything that I'm working on in various different industries. And I, I love sharing this stuff with you. And I just happen to be a university professor at the same time, kind of in my free time, to be honest with you. Uh, this has taken a, over a year of my life to put together. I hope you find it useful. This is a big investment on my part, and so I hope you guys, if you are wanting to learn 3D game development, that this is finally the solution that you've been looking for, and it's free, so you can't really complain, can you? Well, maybe you can, but thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.